Welcome to my channel. This is the Star Wars The Mandalorian Razor Crest in 172nd scale by AMT. Join me, won't you? Welcome back. This is going to be an open box review of the Round 2 AMT Razor Crest in 172nd scale. Yes, I do know that Ravel came out with a kit about a year ago. I did a review on that and I put a link down below or at the end of the video the link is there too. So you can go ahead and re look at my review uh, and decide for yourself which kit would be the best for you. Actually, I do like this. In the beginning, I did not, but after watching uh, some video of the studio models, this falls right in place with those. Anyway, this is kit number 1273. Let's open this up and get started. And here's the instructions, typical of AMT. And just a large fold-out style instructions here. Let's get a closer look at these. And here's the instructions, very small and compact. And as you can see, top left, we start on the engines. If you're going to light them, you do some modifying to the parts here. Sandwiching all that together. Then we do the guns next, left and right guns. After that, the engines start to get assembled here, the left side and right side. And continuing with the other parts of the engine and the front part. Next we assemble Mandu and Grogu along with the flight tech instrument panels and walls. That's how everything goes together there. And looks like the whole assembly just drops into the front. And then we start putting on the, the uh, engine pylons and the bottom of the fuselage assembly along with the top of the fuselage assembly. Then we put the two halves of the fuselage assemblies together. And the windows go in next. And some of the additional panels get installed next on top and in front. Then the guns go in next. Along with the uh, engine assemblies. And 
all the decal placement and color callouts are on the side of the box. Let's look at that. And here's the water slide decals. We get two versions of the stripes. We get the the brand new stripes, and of course we get the beat up stripes in the version there that obviously was used in the TV show. Get a closer look. And these are of a high gloss finish on these. Right there. And right there. Instrument panels are represented here. Looks like seat belts. Here's the beat up markings, all chipped up and such. All right, let's look at all the parts. And here's the first tree. All the parts are molded in this metallic silver color, except for the clear parts. And this represents the engines. The engines, of course, are in four sections in quarters, I believe. Probably will make it easier so you can light the kit up because this kit is designed to be lighted. But anyway, these engines do remind me of the A-10 fighter aircraft and uh, very nice there very surprised to see uh, the flash here but it's not on the main parts one part is loose here turn it over and looks like plenty of room there to have lighting and wires running in there no problem and here's a close-up of the engines and you can see a lot of recessed and raised panels details here very nice i like the look of that it looks true to the uh, studio practical model that was used in season one and same here the other side of the engine there and you can see the details there once again recessed and raised paneling looks very good and just a repeat of the other side and just to give you a little closer view very good I'm impressed with this It would have been nice if they would have given us these uh, intake flaps molded open so we can position them open for, for the air intake on the engines. And very nice though. And here's the uh, intake and exhaust parts of the engine. Very nice here. Here's a close-up of the intake section. And parts of the exhaust. And it is already opened up, so you can light this up like I was saying. That's one of the features of this kit. Makes it very nice.
you have the chicken feathers and and on this side you got the compressor blades and here's the clear parts tree and we have the windows and of course parts of the engine exhaust area that are clear allows you to light up the engine very nice feature here and the windows up front very clear very thin engine exhaust and more windows there give you a view of the windows with the blue background engine exhaust and the windows again and these parts are the landing gear and landing gear doors close-up of the doors here very fine details here very crisp impressive landing gear in this case here's some of the exterior panels and of course the cannons are the guns that go up front close-up of those panels close-up of the guns or cannons and the back side and this tree contains all the cockpit bulkheads and instrument panels can you spot Grogu and Mando that's right there's little Grogu and there's his little bed and of course Mando here's the other side and here's the components of the flight deck here's the back side of his seat side panels and Mando Grogu Mando's arms more panels rear door bulkhead there's Grogu's bed right there Mando's chair close-up of the bulkhead and a close-up of the instrument panel here's Grogu's bed and here's Grogu I'll give you a close-up of that and Mando here's a close-up of Mando backside of Mando backside of Grogu and the arms
These parts are the exterior top panel, engine pylons, the cargo ramp, cargo door, And here's a close-up of that panel that mounts to the top of the fuselage. Very nice detailing there. Very cool. And here's the engine pylons. Those are nice too. Recessed and raised paneling. And you can see here the panel lines appear to be large. And I agree, they are large, but they fit right in with the practical effect filming model. If you see photographs of it, you'll understand where I'm coming from with this. I do have some screenshots, so I will throw them up as I see fit to give you a compare and contrast with the paneling here compared to the practical effects filming model. cargo ramp cargo door and some more additional external panels and here's the top half of the fuselage very nice there And just a reminder, this is not a comparison review between this and the Revell kit. I will prepare a separate video for that. Uh, just want you to show you this kit on its own merits. So we'll get a closer look here, but notice the large paneling and how they're exaggerated. When you shine it into the light, just like the practical effects filming model. So I totally agree with round two with doing it this way. I, th I think it's uh, a nice effect and it looks good. Especially when you're going to do some primer coats and put some paint down on top of this. Uh, it's going to help those panel lines even show a little more. Very nice. And you can see close up view even more so. Window frames look just right, just like the, the model itself. Looks good. The detail, I think, is superb. And here's the bottom fuselage boat, I would call it, because it's all one piece. This looks like the slide molding technology was done with this one in order to give us all the details all around on this. But it is very nice. And this is the bottom section. It mounts to the bottom of the fuselage, which contains you know, your landing gear mounts and such. Superb detailing here and the panel lines once again do represent the practical effects models that they used in season one very nice there I'll give you a closer look at these here in a second this measures A little over 12 inches 
12 and a quarter. And of course, landing gear mount. That's just going to mount on top of that. Just like that. And there's the measurement for the length. And here's this uh, detail here for the bottom of the fuselage. And I don't like how they broke that off there. Kind of haphazard. And detailing the Superb. Once again, I'll show you some screen captures of the practical effects model as needed. And you can see since there's no cargo bay with this kit, just a flight deck, they molded one of the doors shut. Very nice there. On the other side. Now on this side, once again, looks just like the, the model and the TV show. There's your side cargo door opened up. And my thoughts on that is uh, that allow you to access any electronics you put into this for your lighting because you want to light up the cockpit and the engines. So that may allow you to put uh, maybe mount some earth magnets in here to keep the door shut and your on and off switches for your lights and then of course the cargo bay that allow you to insert a 9 volt battery in there so it can be completely autonomous and not have to run any wiring through a stand but that's what it looks like in there it would be hard to design a level cargo bay with the way they did that here. You would have to cut this all away, which wouldn't be hard to do. You can cut that all out and then insert this on there without the, you know, without that big large tab and make yourself a, a different floor. But obviously the landing gear protrusions would be in the way also. So this kit really wasn't designed with the cargo floor, but it's perfect because, um, all pictures that I've seen of the practical effects model, they didn't light up the cargo bay. They lighted up the flight deck area and they lighted up the back of the engines. Plus there's some uh, red nav lights and stuff like that that they put on this. So very nice there. And once again, round two that's provided us is one of their infamous round two bases. And the rod is hollow, 
So you can run your wiring through that. If you decide to put your all your wiring in the base, you can do that. I personally will not do that. I'm going to run all the wiring just inside the, the fuselage of the model. There's a lot of room there for it and plenty of room to access switches and batteries. I went ahead and fit the top half of the fuselage to the bottom. And that's how that looks there. Very impressive. And uh, like I was saying, this kit was designed for lighting and where you can light up the uh, flight deck area up front and you can light up uh, the back of the engines. You could also install some of those red nav lights that, that were on this also. But uh, it does make for a very nice model. It, you, The option is to uh, model it with the landing gear down or the landing gear up. I personally will put it uh, with the landing gear down because I like to show all the details of the kit itself and light it up. I mean, uh, it's designed specifically for that. But you don't have to light it. You can just build it and enjoy yourself with it. But uh, it does make a very nice presentation of the Razor Crest. So, great job round two. I congratulate you on this. After seeing the practical effects model, it convinced me that this was probably uh, a good option to represent that specifically. So if you want a model that represents um, the studio scale models, the smaller ones that is, that they used in filming uh, season one of Mando, The Mandalorian, uh, this is the one for you. Okay, so with that, if you like my content, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for all video upload notifications. Stay tuned for a compare and contrast video comparing this kit with the Revell kit. Happy modeling, everybody, and take care.